Good afternoon, adventurers. As promised, we're going to have our tear down here of our mini moto. It is a Tomos 50cc two speed automatic. Uh, water sight unseen down in Lexington, about a hundred miles away. Um, uh, just to literally for you guys, uh, we're going to. It's it is a listen, it's bad. You'll see, just wait, you'll see. Uh, a few of you, if you look real close, will notice a few things wrong already. But, I digress. Uh, this is going to be uh, part one of the three-part series of a little, uh, let's call it, mini ADV build. Just, you can literally do adventure with anything. Literally anything. I paid a hundred bucks for this thing. Uh, it's going to cruise probably around 40, 45 without spending too much money on it. Um... But we've got a we've got good bones here. We've got a nice tank. Uh, I'll get you guys in there a little deeper in a second. Uh, but we've got a good tank. Uh, the frame is definitely, or the swing arm is definitely twisted. That's just so it turns easier in the right hand side. It's fine. That's custom. Uh, that's next level stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's go over the basics. Uh, 16 inch wheels. Not the best ground clearance for adventure, but we're gonna we're gonna stay light. We're gonna do a little bit of travel, a little bit of off road. Nothing crazy. Again, you don't have to go overboard to have an adventure. So so far, and we'll keep uh, we'll keep track of the let's say cost. Um, uh, so right now we're at about 100 bucks, uh, which that's great so far. But we again haven't gotten into this very hard. Uh, to see what we see. Uh, we've got electricals, not great. Uh, we're missing that. Uh, the tail light's gone. Uh, we might have a usable headlight in here. Uh, but this is this whole dash is all but useless. Um, I know a little bit about these already. Uh, this is upside down. The head is upside down. Um, so yeah, somebody has been in there who shouldn't be. Uh, the carburetor, and we'll uh, once I do a, a quick overview of what I just see from looking at it, I'll get you guys into the details. Uh, the carburetor has a regular washer in the top, holding everything down with entirely too much RTV already. Um, I will say, uh, just from picking it up from the guy, and I just showed up, had him cash, walked away. Uh, this, it sounds like gravel. The transmission sounds like gravel. That's probably good. Uh, very tight tolerance. That's definitely going to work out in my favor. Favor. Uh, but the cool thing is, because this is a more modern version, we got nice, beefy mag wheels. Should have the bigger brakes on it. Uh, we've got an electronic ignition. We've got a, actually a regulator rectifier. So if I wanted to run a battery or some 12-volt uh, DC for accessories like USB ports, or maybe even a little bit of heated gear. Uh, it is winter. Uh, we've got that. Plus, it's got the more modern seat. Listen, I'm getting old. My back hurts. I need a good seat. Uh, these handlebars, they're, they are handlebars. So, those are fixed. Uh, we've got half of all of the electronic controls. So, we're going to get rid of all that. We're going to, the wiring over here. I, just wait. Just wait a second. We'll get there. <laughs> so it's it's really rough, but again, it's a hundred bucks, uh, and I get to flex a little bit uh, my mechanical chops. Uh, shouldn't be too much work. Uh, but yeah, so let's uh, let's pick you guys up and take you around right here. Let's see. So the carb, as you can see, has a a flat washer on the top that's just held down by a screw. That is not how that works. Our head here is upside down, so it doesn't really line up with nothing. And then if you come back all the way around, you can see that nothing is straight. Bonk. So she got bonked somewhere, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna try and straighten all that out. Uh, we've got somebody probably cut this open to try and steal the catalytic converter. Uh, and then did a bad job welding it back up. So yeah, uh, that's uh, phase two, the overview. Uh, we'll get you back around here. 
Uh, it looks like a wild animal has chewed its way into the stator. Don't know what that's about. I probably don't want to know. And then we have this, this nest of disconnected stuff that we are just gonna, we are gonna absolutely get rid of all of that. Uh, mopeds don't take much to run uh, their basic stuff. It's like three wires to run the whole thing. We got a 420 chain here. Uh, all of the tubes are toast. Uh, there's no tire pressure in any of these. The tires look horrible in the first place. They're all cracked. So we'll, we'll see what we do about them. Again, we're trying for the budget. And again, we have 100 bucks. Boop! That's our bill right now. Obviously, I'm not going to bill my own time. Because lately, that's just worthless anyway. So yeah, there's that. Okay, one of our first major problems is this thing's not going anywhere. We have a little bit of the uh, petrol. Uh, and this carburetor looks bad off. So, so far we're at, uh, let's do it again. Right there, 100 bucks. Uh, we're not gonna count any costs for these basic tools. Well, if we get any, if we get into anything serious tool-wise, we'll add that to the tally. But a Phillips and a flathead will get you a lot farther on these than you think. So, uh, first bit, let's get this dude off of here. Oh, we got a flathead clamp here. Whoop, just a hose clamp, nothing serious. Again, this is this skill right here, just using a screwdriver. Boom, step one. Carburetor is detached from the bike. Now here we go already. Look, just all of it. That's way too much RTV. That's fine. Uh, but we are still attached to the bike via this very loose uh, throttle cable. Uh, you shouldn't really have uh, about an inch of slack in there, so you're you're already we're lost there. And we got a little flathead up here too. So let's uh, release this <laughs> washer that's holding it on, and the whole slide assembly should be coming out. Yep, there it is. All right, we got our needle, we got everything. Oh, that is that is what we're calling in the industry. Let's see, custom. Uh, so this is practically useless. Uh, We'll figure that out later. So step one, we gotta do something about the carburetor. Okay. Hello! Our next bit of kit, now this, I literally have not touched any of this yet. This was finger tight. Spark plug. Spark plug. Me camera, camera, spark plug. Now, that's kind of a good sign. The color is darker. You don't want a big white uh, super hot plug, that means she's been getting too lean, which means air leaks or a bad fuel mix. This is pretty dark, which is better than not. Uh, that's what we like to see that. Uh, this guy right here, compression tester. We're just gonna cruise that dude in there and see what we got to play with before we do anything to see if this is worth our time. Now you're seeing this as I'm seeing it. This is no, no spare takes. All right, you guys, you guys watch out while I give this a crank or two. Hey -ya. Hey -ya. Ooh. What do we got there? What does it say? Oh, yes. Hey ah. Ooh, right at 120. That's that is almost exactly where we want to be. These aren't very high compression. Uh, they're not high performance. So 120 is. <laughs> Overqualified. All right, so that means we got a good cylinder and piston, which saves us. All right, so we're done with that. So with that, uh, that's great news. Compression, that's a huge one. Uh, the carburetor is a little bit of a bummer. We haven't even opened that up yet. I'll get you guys on the bench, and we'll take a peek. Uh, likely going to replace it. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, I have worked on mopeds before, I might actually just have one. Uh, so, I'm not gonna tally that one up if we have to replace it, because it's just laying around. Uh, that's a great thing about little bikes like these when you get into them, you start to accrue many parts, so uh, maintaining them doesn't really become a problem. All right, uh, with that, we're gonna move on to the electricals. Now we're gonna move on to the 
electrical. Now we can see that it has a stator, and it is spinning and not loose through the beaver hole, which is good. We have to take all this off. Uh, we see that we have a plug boot and wire that goes back to our ignition coil. Uh, this is electronic ignition, so there's no points to adjust or anything like that. Benefit of buying new. Nothing wrong with an old set of points, but this is what was presented to me. Uh, so we see that it is hooked up in some fashion. Hopefully, there isn't something wrong with these switches up here. Or there's a missing key switch or something. Uh, so what we're going to do, whoop, we're going to put the spark plug back in. Just finger tight, because all it is is a test. And then we're going to use this little guy. Whoop, the old sparkulator test. Uh, all you got to do is pop around to the spark plug and then put the spark plug boot all on the device. And what we're looking for is, I'll need your guys' help. So again, I'm going to have to up. I'm going to be pushing this thing over. You guys keep an eye on that. See if we get an orange light. Oh, wait, you guys can't see it. There, just let me know. Oh, wait, you can't see it. You can't see it. Maybe, I don't know. You can't see it, but I can. But uh, yeah, we've got ignition. All right, so we've got two of the three. We've got, boom, we've got compression. We've got ignition. Uh, so the big one we've got to work on so far is fuel. I'll let you guys in on a little secret. It's winter here in Kentucky, and we don't have terrible winters, but it sure makes it real cozy to have a good fire going. Shop's starting to warm up. Feels good, man. Our first major issue with getting the bike to run is this carburetor problem here. We've got RTV in some unholy places. Uh, I did just remove off camera the slide assembly, which is just taking the cable off. Now the slide assembly, eh, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. That's all fine. It's just that carburetors don't like air leaks and this has, uh, let's see, what was the word? Uh, many of them, there's two holes in it. Uh, there's no seal on the outside. Uh, so that would indicate that this booger would likely run lean. Uh, so let's, uh, so far we're still only on some cheap tools. Let's, um, let's rack up the spark plug diagnosis. Not many people have that just laying around, so that's another 10 bucks. So we'll add it up to, wait, whoop, 110 bucks so far. Somebody write that down or I'm going to forget. So 110 bucks well, for the spark plug diagnosis. Now you could not, you don't have to use that. You can hold it up against the cylinder, but it's nice to have. And I'm gonna pull some cheap punches later. So we'll, we'll rack that one up to a cost. Uh, bingo, all we've got here is a couple of Phillips screwdrivers. Let's crack this booger open and see what we got. Oh. Yo! So the car body itself, if you just take a gander, doesn't look too bad. Not the worst thing. Um, there's one problem though. The bowl where the fuel is actually stored is, um, if you can see it, pretty horrendous. There is some nasty stuff in the bottom of that. Uh, it looks like rust, which that indicates that maybe that tank isn't as clean as we thought and that we should definitely be running a filter or two uh, on the fuel line. Now the other bonus is there's normally some type of gasket in this channel. There is not. Uh, so we're missing a gasket. This one's full of rust. Um, this appears to be uh, a Chinese replica of the original carburetor. So not only did they lose the first one, uh, they ruined this Chinese one. <laughs> so yeah, I think we're gonna um, chalk that up to a total loss. Maybe keep it for parts or jets or something. But uh, this one's 
this is not good. It's probably savable. You can order the top uh, cover, you can clean it out, order the gasket, and you're fine. But again, we're on the budget, and I'm pretty sure I have another one. Boom! Turns out I did. Uh, we did, in fact, change the carburetor style on my wife's moped. So we have a complete uh, stock carburetor, like the original stock carburetor. There you, say, you go, you got Del Orto. So we're returning her back to her former glory. Uh, the bike that I had this on was running when we took it off, so I don't think we need to take it apart and clean it, which saves us a little bit of time. But we'll see. With the rest of the thing in that tank, uh, I fear that before this video is over, uh, we are going to end up taking this apart once or twice just to clean her out. Okay, our next bit of work is the transmission. Now this has a two-speed automatic. There are two, count them, two clutches in this bad boy. Uh, and when I turned it over, it sounded like somebody has been keeping their rock collection in here. So we are going to address that as best we can. And cue the hyperlapse. <clears throat> Uh, let's slow her down for a bit as I remove these. I don't know if there's fluid in there or not. Likely there's not much, if any at all. But uh, if you're hankering for a cheap adventure and you don't have a, a catch pan for something this small, there's no way there's more than a quart of fluid in there. So you can actually just use an old oil quart for your drip pan. Okay, that's the last bolt for the side cover. Uh, again, I can hit it with a little impact. I can get over here with my fancy ratchets, but we're going for basic, super cheap. So we're gonna stick to as many hand tools as we can. It's easy to get a hold of a five mil Allen, and that's what most of the hardware on this bike is. Five, six, uh, five and six Allen wrenches, and then the 10 mil 17 and 19. All right, let's... Uh, now I assume this is going to leak spoo everywhere. <clears throat> All right, well, that's good news. There's fluid in there. Uh, that's better than no fluid. And there's a normal amount of silver in there. Uh, looks like we managed not to tear the gasket as well. And now, when you're tearing stuff like this apart, you gotta listen Listen, oh yeah, there we go, that's not great. That sounds awful. That was a shim that goes here. Uh, looks like maybe it was too tight. Uh, some of it is still on there. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, that's ruined, so we're gonna set that aside. There's usually a shim on the crank here. Ooh wee. The crank bearings shouldn't move this way or this way. They should definitely go this way, maybe even a little bit of this way. But this and this, not great. So we've got a crank bearing. Now, again, we're budget, so <laughs> listen, we're gonna push that thing as far as we can. We got another shim here that was up here, all wore out. Uh, and I did, in fact, see one of them go into our makeshift pan here. Oh, maybe not. I don't see it. Um, but the other bad news is the clutches. Uh, you can see that things aren't quite lined up like they should be. Uh, there is no clutch material on there. Uh, and that is our first gear clutch. So what we're going to do is we're going to pause right there, grab the proper tools, and we're gonna crank that booger off of there. All right, adventurers, we're starting to get some, well, let's call it stage two tools. Uh, I am a mechanic here, I'm working a lot of this stuff, and I have a few tricks up my sleeve. This is a piston stop. So, normally, you would try and remove this, and it'll just spin. So you need some type of device to stop that spinning. 
And if you want to cheap out, you could put some uh, cotton. Don't use nylon, use cotton. You can put cotton rope inside the piston, coil it up a little bit. That way the piston can't come all the way forward. Or you can get one of these guys. So uh, let's rack this up to mm, five bucks. Uh, let's put it right up. Whoop, five bucks. And so now we're at 115 for the special tool to get the clutches on. So this is a piston stop. What this does is it threads in the spark plug. So, you can thread that all the way in, and what that does is it puts the post in the way of the piston, so the piston cannot come forward anymore. And then she, she locks up. You can give the crank bolt a little, ooh, a little crackerino, and now not only am I diving into that, I'm diving into what I would refer to as a basic mechanics uh, tool kit. We've got a 3 8 ratchet, Mine happens to be gold plated. I did get the Harbor Freight April Fool Special. Uh, love this thing. It is actually a very nice ratchet. Uh, it is plated, so it's not a bad ratchet. It's not just soft gold, but, but it's very nice. I love using it. And then some basic extension with a 17 on there. Uh, if you are a basic mechanic, you should have these kinds of tools. So there's our whoop, crank nut. And then the clutch pack. Whoop, comes right off. Do not lose this shim. That keeps the clutch pack from going too far in. Rub it on your gearing. So there's our crank shim. We're gonna drop out first gear. And yeah, there is no clutch material left. Now, this is just the tear down video. So we'll when we go into the rebuild video, we'll hit you guys up with how to repair this on the cheap. But it's gonna cost a little bit, a couple bucks, nothing crazy yet. You can order them but they are a little salty, especially for our budget video. Uh, but the actual unit itself doesn't seem to be damaged. It looks like it can be doctored up. Uh, and we'll get to that in the next video. Let's take a look at the... Oh, yes. Again, second gear. Uh, the unit is in much better shape. Everything's where it should be. That's how it should look with the clips in the right spot. But you can clearly see no clutch material. So this thing's been rode hard and put away harder. So we're definitely going to have to rebuild the clutches, and we can do that on the short and cheap. Not a huge deal. The biggest deal is this clutch play. That's not great. Oh yeah. Uh, that would require us to disassemble the top end, drop the motor, pull the crankcase apart, order the correct bearings, take them off the crank. That is not what this video is about. So we are gonna not do that. Keep in mind, this is a $100 moped. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna see how far these little guys can get us without blowing up. Uh, and if it does blow up, then it's time for the rebuild. But it does currently spin without too much resistance. We're gonna leave them. Uh, this is not what I would do if it were a customer bike. If that were an issue, I would immediately tell them it's time for the rebuild. Again, not what this video is about. This is a budget adventure build, let's call it Mad Max style fix. Uh, it does still work, it just sounds awful. It will be a problem, it just depends on when it decides to be that problem. Now this bearing on the other hand, that feels really good. Uh, and there should be lots of play here. There's a counter bearing on the other side that's gonna keep it still. As well as the crank bearing, which will give us a little more life. There's two more bearings that go here that keep these shafts from going too crazy because there's a lot of weight on the end of them. So they'll, they'll buy us some time. I don't see huge chunks. Most of this gray material, that's gonna be burnt up clutch pad, which is not a huge deal. What we don't wanna see is real shiny material, uh, which would tell us that the gears are chewed up or the cases are chewed up. We don't see that. So I would give this transmission, let's call it a six out of 10, uh, mainly because of this. The clutches aren't that big of a deal, because we can repair those, but that crank bearing is not ideal. Uh, and with that, that's a transmission teardown. Let's move on. <sighs> okay, truth time adventures. One thing we are not gonna address, uh, we did do the compression test, uh, and we're at 120 pounds, 
So there's really no reason for me to put this the right way around. It's not hurting anything. Um, what we don't want to do is pull it off because then whatever gasket they're using in there, uh, you'd likely have to replace. You don't want to reuse a head gasket. So uh, we're going to go with the motto that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, and if it's just a little broke, uh, ride it anyway. So we're going to leave that how it is. Maybe snug down the head bolts a little bit just to make sure it's seated. Uh, but yeah, we're not going to address that. It's not hurting anything. Uh, it just, it's silly. I know it's upside down, but it's again, not hurting anything. Uh, so let's move on to tearing down the electrical. And that's literally just going to be a lot of removal because most of this is not stuff we're going to use. Uh, Kentucky is very loose with its road laws for 50cc stuff. So we're going to have a headlight. A headlight, a tail light, maybe a brake light. We can use hand signals here uh, for braking and turning. Uh, headlight, tail light, and an off switch. That's it. Uh, what we have here, there's a lot of turn signals, flasher relays. There's also, at one point, this did have a battery. Uh, we're not going to run that. We don't need to run that. Uh, it's a pipe dream. It's wildly unnecessary. There's, uh, we don't need the starter. I don't think this one has a starter. It just has a battery for turn signals like that. So we're, we are not gonna use all that. We are, again, this is budgeting adventure. Whether you got a couple pennies to rub together or you just know a guy, uh, we are just getting this back on the road with as little need to replace as possible. Uh, and with that, let's uh, pull you guys over here and start on this rass nest. Okay, like I said, we are in the tear down process of this adventure build. Now what we have here is we're gonna try and get all the superfluous nonsense off of this bike so that we can start to clean it, rewire, and then we can double check with what we have and what we need. Now most of this wiring we are not going to use. Look at all this. You do not need all of that here in Kentucky. Um, if somebody is zip tied up here, most of this stuff is missing, so we are going to eliminate as much as we can. What we really need to keep is the ignition coil, and the regulator rectifier wiring. Uh, ignition coil is going to obviously supply power uh, to the ignition, the spark plugs, it's going to run all that. This is where all the uh, computer is for running the ignition. So it's like three wires. That one's very easy. Uh, and all you have to do is interrupt that to a ground to make a kill switch, which is what we're going to do. Uh, the other one, though, uh, the regulator rectifier, you got to pay attention to. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the one that's unplugged. Uh, regulator rectifier, very important. That's our lights. We are we have no lights without that. So we're gonna have to rescue that. In the meantime, let's get all this stuff out of here. Cue the hyperspeed. All right, we've pretty much eliminated everything we need from the body here. Uh, we've got our stator wires that have our electrical outputs. We also have our ignition wires uh, that run the ignition coil. And then we have over here our regulator. I don't believe this is a rectifier. It could be both and just not wired for it. Uh, but this is gonna make sure our voltage doesn't go too high uh, and roast all of our light bulbs. Well, we've roasted the electrical connector goes back to the tail light because we are going to remove that main rear fender. It's all bent and crooked and the tail light's messed up. So we're going to replace that. And these are all the wires that go up to most of the stuff that's up here, uh, such as turn signals, kill switch, high beam, low beam, horn, brake light switches, uh, which we are going to either eliminate or replace most of that. Uh, so let's continue. Like I said, most of this is all 5 millimeter Allen, 6 millimeter Allen, and a 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, we are going to hang on to the throttle here. There doesn't actually appear to be anything wrong with it. It's actuating properly. It seems to be the stock one. So we should be able to use that with the carburetor I have. So we're just going to wrap that dude around and save him for later. That saves us probably 10 or 15 bucks. And it 
again, I think we're probably at, what, 115? Boom! 115 bucks so far. Uh, we're gonna get rid of all this garbage. Oh, uh, we are gonna try and maybe save our horn wiring. Now I'm bringing you guys around to show you that this originally does have a quaint little speedometer, but uh, all of the cabling and stuff is gone. And we brought you guys around to show you it really does have a speedometer, but again, with its stock form, it's not going to be going fast enough for that to really matter. Yeet! Uh, so we're just going to remove that. It's one less cost for the adventure. And again, they're really not fast enough to have to worry about them. The other thing we're going to hang on to with the throttle cable uh, is the rear brake cable, which is still here, albeit wired, uh, routed poorly, but it's still here. We're going to leave it on. Uh, we do have a little bit of a, a brake handle situation. I don't want to replace that because it's still technically working. The brake should be good enough. Uh, we're going to run them, and we might have to replace them down the line. Uh, but let's get this headlight off. Pro tip, when you are removing things, uh, keep the hardware. You never know when you need extra nuts and bolts. Uh, stuff rattles off. There we go. All right, that's all gone. We're not going to use these. Yep. Those are gone. Now, these ears, these headlight ears, are a little loose, uh, but we may end up using them to mount up our new headlight. Uh, likely, I'm going to run something LED so that uh, even with as little output power as this has, it's still going to be very, very bright. Uh, we've got a couple of little cable guides here. Uh, so that's that's pretty much the tear down of the upper controls. What we need is a, a kill switch and we need a headlight. So there, we'll dig around in the bin, see what we have. Might have to make a purchase. Just notice that it's missing the top nut. That's cool. I'm gonna track that down. Uh, but yeah, we so far we have a, a left rear brake that we can use. It is usable, it needs adjustment. Uh, we don't currently have a front brake, so we're gonna have to source that out. Uh, we do want brakes. Brakes, brakes, brakes. Don't skimp on the brakes. Everywhere else, not the brakes. Because, uh, you know, 45 doesn't sound that bad. You don't want to hit anything at 45 miles an hour. Uh, so this is pretty much our teardown. Uh, we do need tires. Do we need tires, man? I don't know. These are probably fine. I might uh, root around in the old friend group and find some 16-inch uh, off-road tires. Just to make it a little more adventure, uh, I likely will not be purchasing anything crazy. Uh, but yeah, there's our teardown. Uh, so things that we need. So far, we're only what uh, 115 in. Ready? Whoop! 115. And things that we need. Uh, clearly, the tubes are gone, so we need tubes. Uh, we need tubes. We need a headlight. We need a brake lever and a tail light. And then we'll go from there. Uh, the rest of it is simply rewiring what is already here and we know is good. Uh, oh, also we need to rewind the clutches. So that'll be part two in the video. Uh, thanks for hanging out in the garage with me. Uh, part two of the video will be the actual rebuild, the repair, and actually trying to get this thing to move under its own power. That one will probably be a little bit longer, but as an introduction, uh, this is what we have to work with. This is the bare bones. Uh, a lot of removal here to get rid of the stuff that's broken, doesn't doesn't work, or we don't need it. Uh, the other thing that we're going to have to inspect is that tank. Uh, but that's uh, in part two. We'll see you guys around.